Mountain West is in the news. And of course, we're here to keep you updated. Conference realignment and expansion is always in the news. So we're back on the big mountain. Hey, it's good to have you back here on the mountain. JY and Steve is with me. We are going to talk about the Mountain West and some ongoings. Things are changing daily. I'm trying to keep up on everything on X. If you want to follow me, that's TBM underscore JY. But I do want to have a brief discussion about a few items. I did a standalone episode uh, here on Sunday evening about kind of what had transpired by the end of last week and over the weekend with some schools. I want to revisit that. I also want to talk a little bit more about FCS schools. And lastly, I want to end with some comments that the Wyoming Athletic Director Tom Berman made regarding everything that's going on right now. Uh, There was a report that came out here on Monday. So let me just first say I laid out my phases for the Mountain West as I did with the PAC. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually gonna call this, I'm gonna call this tiers with the Mountain West because I do think the pack was phases. There was a clear first, second, and third phase, and they weren't going to phase three until they knew what happened in phase two. And a commenter uh, kind of uh, asked me about that, and I'm, I, and I said, no, you know, I, I probably should call these tiers, not phases, because I don't think there is a strict delineation between the phases necessarily. I think they could all be happening. Uh, kind of at the same time, so I want to call them tiers here with the Mountain West. And that top tier, as I'm going to call it now, was the Northern Illinois, the Toledo, and the Texas State. The three schools that we have heard have interest from the Mountain West. We know the two MAC schools, uh, the, the MAC was reached out to about those two schools. As of right now, I have not seen any news that they have actually gone to those two schools. We'll see if anything really transpires from that. That's not the same for Texas State. We do know that a verbal offer uh, was given over the weekend, and there was some interesting information that came out on Monday on X. I retweeted some of this, uh, that it may be happening sooner than people really realize this Texas State to the Mountain West type of situation. (coughs) We'll have to wait and see on that. Um, Let me go back. I want to talk FCS here a little bit more, there's some schools I want to talk about a little a little more than I have in the past, specifically the Dakotas, and I'll tell you why. Um, before we get there, I just want to say it's clear that the Mountain West is going to lean on the FBS uh, schools and lean on some of that to happen first before they start going down the FCS route. So I do think there's definitely those tiers are definitely uh, separated because they want to try to fill as many spots as they can with current FBS programs before they go the FCS route. That's not to say that they won't be adding FCS schools. That's not to say that. It's just, I I do think those are maybe a split in terms of phases or tiers there, FBS and FCS. So let's talk about Sac State. You know this school is a school I have been just going crazy about here recently. They're hitting the the X and the socials and the, and the, PR, all of that going on right now. Um, They are about the 20th TV market. I've said that before. They just announced new a new football stadium they can have an agreement with uh the king sacramento kings for some sort of basketball we know unlv the rebels play their football games right now they rent uh the allegiant stadium and they're playing it in an nfl stadium they're saying the same could be true for sacramento state and their basketball teams and just on monday it was announced that 35 million dollars has been secured for nil for Sacramento State Athletics. So they are on a full court press, to use a basketball analogy, to try and get into an FBS conference. Of course, you're looking at the Mountain West and possibly the PAC. I don't think the PAC is lightly, likely. That's just me. They have higher aspirations than to bring up an FCS program. And I don't say that to slight Sac State or any FCS programs. It's just the way it is. They're not even willing to look at half of the Mountain West. They're in FBS right now. So that's just my opinion on that. So let's look how they might want to go east. So if they're taking Texas State, who's in the central time zone, that kind of opens up some earlier game times, right? Right now, they only are in the Pacific and the Mountain. Getting into a central time zone would allow for some earlier games um, and, and obviously some new markets. I mean, that's what this is. the game is all about right now, getting into... 
higher level markets, new markets to try and increase your exposure. I want to talk here quickly about the Dakotas because it's it's two schools we've kind of pushed off because we were very focused on the mountain and the western or I'm sorry the mountain and the pacific time zone but now that potentially Texas state might be you know here with the central maybe there's a central contingent that they're looking to add so looking back at 2022 when you look at uh funding and revenue Sac state was 35 million dollars North Dakota State was $30 million, Montana, 28, Montana State, 26, and South Dakota State, 25. So all well-funded, and it even said that, um, I believe in terms of uh, the athletic department for FCS, the football <coughs> revenue for North Dakota State, $6.4 million dollars for football, and that was higher than 20 plus FBS schools, including UConn and Houston and several others. So, you know, the Dakotas absolutely have the budget and they're absolutely bringing in the, the revenue. Um, so I wanted to kind of come back to them. It also has been said, uh, some sources from the Summit Conference, which is what they're a part of, they said they, they could potentially see up to three schools in that conference being consumed by Western conferences at the FBS level. And then they have to figure out, are, are they even still a viable conference at the FCS level? So would they have to merge or what may go on there? So the Dakotas may be much more in play here than we have given them credit for, at least in the beginning, especially if this Texas State rumor is true and the Mountain West is adding central time zone really opens the play field there for the Dakotas. Steve, I'm going to stop there before I get into Tom Berman's comments. I know if you've seen some of my updates, you can mm -hmm. comment on what I just said now or anything that we've been talking about here. All right. Well, since I was not able to be around for a couple of those episodes, I was traveling for work and then for the Penn State game. Yes. I've, I've been keeping up with your updates and everything. I, I, I have three thoughts uh if i was running the mountain west okay. i have kind of three priorities and some of them align with what you're saying okay <clears throat> uh, but i have three things that would be my priorities uh that i want to offer mm -hmm. okay first uh my number one priority would be to get into texas yes okay and right you're already talking about the is it it's north texas texas state. texas state <coughs> oh, the me, bobcats, the bobcats. okay <coughs> excuse me um so getting into texas i think needs to be that first priority Second priority, get back into add another California market. Yes. So uh, Sac State meets that requirement. Yep. And then to me, the third priority, and you were just talking about this, getting into the central time zone, I think that would do huge benefit to their media value. Uh, and again, you're talking about that with the potential MAC teams, and, and I think the Dakotas are in the central. Yes. Yeah. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is I've seen a lot of chatter on – uh, Twitter X about the FCS decision, and that's where the Mountain West, uh, you know, is right now. Adding the Bobcats would be fantastic. That would get them to eight, correct? That'd get them to seven, seven full, full okay. members. All yes. right, seven full members, eight football members, eight football members. Um, and they would need one more member for to be for full, yep. for full conference yep. membership. Um, and so, and I'm not going to offer an opinion on this. I yep. just want to bring up that there's a lot of chatter that the Mountain West right now is making a big decision on: do they want to go that FCS route? Or try and fill membership through FBS. Right. Um, and, you know, adding the Bobcats would be a huge uh, part of that. So I think that's something I, I agree with you. I think they're looking at tiers and they're looking at all those avenues at once. Right. And one part of that is do we want to go the FCS route? I mean, if they could steal two MAC teams and they can get the Bobcats out of Texas, like that fills some huge needs. Yeah. And then they need to decide do they go the FCS route? If they do, I love adding Sacramento State. I think it's a great thing. Uh, but I've seen some people say they may be hesitant on that just because of dilution of media value and, right. and things like that. So that's I think that's a huge decision point right now for the Mountain West. Well, and I agree. I think you know they've lost two California schools to me, and, and you know un unfortunately, if you want to call it that, 
Sacramento State is semi-close to San Jose State. Yeah. They're in two different markets. Yeah. Um, and so you'd like to maybe see Southern, if, if you had a perfect world, some sort of Southern California. But you get the best that you yeah. can. And I think Sacramento State absolutely is the best that you can. That's why I've really been high on them here for a while. I want to mention one comment uh, that Tom Berman uh, mentioned, who's the Wyoming AD. I'm, I want to put up a map uh, for our um, viewers here. So uh, Tom Berman says in terms of adding FCS members, his comments just from Monday were, they are on the board, meaning the board that they're looking at, the, the tiers mm -hmm. uh, in my terminology. They are on the board, and uh, the, the, the ones that are there have uh, high-level programs. They're high-level FCS programs. Mm -hmm. Well, I just named the five high-level SCS programs they're probably looking at. I don't think they have five on the board, mm -hmm. but the ones that, you know, I, I, we've seen commenters that talk about Idaho. We've seen commenters that talk about who's been kind of up and down. I don't, I wouldn't consider FC, uh, Idaho being at the top of the FCS. They're solid, but certainly not at the top. You know, I've been, I've talked Tarleton State. I think they have great, uh, you know, they have a, potentially could grow into that. They're not high level today. Absolutely, the Dakotas, the North Dakota State is probably at the top of the list. I mean, if you if you took all the FCS and you look at all the reporting and the funding and all that kind of stuff, I think North Dakota State's probably number one on their list. I don't think Sac State might be four or five on their list. Yeah. I'm just high on them. You know, maybe I'm I'm overstating the media value, the market. Uh, more than than I should be um, than where they have been in terms of a high level program, um, and they're really making their push in PR, so they're they're mm -hmm. out in front of all of this. So maybe overstating Sac State here, uh, but I think North Dakota State is absolutely there at very very near or top uh, of the list. I want to throw up a, a map here real quick. I put this together. As you'll see, you'll see all the current members, or I shouldn't say current, all of the members of the Mountain West as of 2026. Um, I have Texas State highlighted there, um, and then I have two green dots. The two green dots, or circles, are where Sam Houston is located and is where the UTEP New Mexico State is located. And when you look at this from a geography standpoint, yes, they're moving into the central time zone, but it's really hitting two new uh, markets for the Mountain West. It makes a lot of sense there. Um, and I will say something that I said on the last episode, in terms of that UTEP New Mexico state, and it was something that genetics pointed out to me, you know, taking both of them really doesn't, you know, you're taking two for one type yeah. of deal. It's the same market. It's yep. the same everything. It probably doesn't expand what they could get out of a different location. So do they really want to take both of them? You know, I have been banging both of the drums. I'd like to have them. I think they make sense geography wise in terms of the schools that they are. But if they're looking media first, you're probably not taking both of those. So we'll see. I only have one dot there because they're literally, you know, kind of across the border from each other. Especially so. if you don't need just members. Like if they would, yes. let's say they would have lost UNLV, Nevada and Air Force and right. they just need to fill, but but they've, they've kind of kept uh, their members intact. Right. Um, so they may not be, they may not need to just add two for one. That's a good point. Yes. A little, maybe, maybe a little more selective. I know it's hard to say that when you've lost five members, but maybe meaning that you only have to have eight and do they want to get back to that 12? Do they want to go above the 12? We don't know that answer at all right, right. now. At the very least, we're trying to get to eight. So we're yeah. trying to figure out kind of who are the next two most likely members. So let me get into a couple other comments that Tom Berman uh, had mentioned here. It was brought up about the uh, Pac-12 and Mountain West merger. Every episode I've done here over the past week, we always have some commenters. Why can't they just reconcile, figure this out, and merge I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. They're too far apart. And he says there's basically been no discussions about that. Uh, it's it's not going to happen anytime here in the next couple of years. They, they were going to be they will be two different conferences. At least that's where I'm at right now. Um, and you know we'll have to move forward. So he says there's been basically no discussions on that. They then brought up Utah State, and I was anxious to see what he had to say here with Utah State. He said he was surprised. So if you're new to this, and maybe you're not a Mountain West person, you just enjoy listening to us talk. If you know, if, if uh, looking back, four schools left the Mountain West. Then they kind of, the pack went after some AAC schools. And since the AAC school said, no, thank you, the Memphis, the Tulane, the USF, um, then they went back to Middle Mountain West schools and tried to get both Utah State and UNLV. Well, Utah State 
left. And this was after an MOU had been signed by some of the parties. They thought they had eight. The Mountain West thought they had eight. So it was really a last minute flip flop by Utah State. So Berman here says he was surprised. He didn't think that was going to be the situation, which to me reads everybody thought there were eight people that were on the same page here. Um, and he said he was a little angry and disappointed. But that's the way it goes. Of course, he's not going to hold on to that for too long. They've got to fill, you got to move on. Um, but it's clear that the, the Aggies, you know, maybe pulled a bit of a, a bit of a switcheroo on the Mountain West here. And I think we kind of knew that when it was like, hey, everybody's into the MOU. Oops, now they're gone and we need a new MOU and maybe UNLV is going to go. And it was just a hot freaking mess. I think that I, to me, we're well past, I think everybody should be well past the point of being surprised, uh, disappointed, whatever. As you've said, these are all business decisions, and the the teams are made the program all these programs starting with the teams who left the pack and went to the Big Ten yep. and the Big Twelve. Now the teams who left the Mountain West to go to the pack and the ones that didn't uh, are all making their best business decision. Uh, UNLV they looked at it and decided it made and they've been honest with this. It yep. made better financial sense to stay in the Mountain West. If it would have made better financial sense to go to the pack. They would also be in the pack. It's just every school has to look at this, and you got to move past. At this point, if you're holding your hope on trust and feelings and kumbaya, warm love, uh, brotherhood and fellowship, then you're, it's just you're missing the boat. It's business now, uh, and the Mountain West has to look 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 at it that way. And I think they are making yeah. smart decisions on who to add um, based on the value they bring in the business, not by emotions or any of that stuff. Well, and you brought up, you know, the four that left, the Boise, the Colorado State, the Fresno State, and uh, San Diego State. And that was another question, the last question I'll talk about here with Berman. Um, and his response was, it was clear for years that at least three of these schools, and we all know who the three are, it was Boise, it was San Diego State, and it was Colorado State. He said it was clear that three of them, um, he didn't really lump Fresno in. And Fresno was the surprise for me, too. I didn't really have them lumped into those other threes that have definitely made it clear that they, they were aspiring to be more. But he says, for years that those three schools have been wanting to either partner with or create their own league uh, with a goal of becoming a Power Five league he says that's just not going to happen it's a p4 and i retweeted this specific one um and said it's a p4 now and i think i copied you on it and it's like it's going to a p2 we're not there yet but that's where it said i mean he, he hit the nail on the head here uh, in my opinion with this and you know they're, they're trying to maybe <clears throat> elongate uh as as long as they can to get maybe a, a power invite and we saw this with unlv too i mean there's this there's this free out for UNLV, and I, I think any member, if they get a P4 invite. Like, we'll, we'll waive the exit fees if you get a power invite. Um, I hate to tell the PAC and the Mountain West teams, at this point, we're not going anywhere beyond a P4. There's not going to be a P5 again. We're going to a P2, and I don't see any of these schools right now getting an invite to the P2. And, you know, we did all those 2030 episodes, and we didn't talk about these schools because... We don't think any of them are going to the power conference. So I just wanted to, add, and that's not a knock. I love these schools. I love the group of five. That's why I'm a Mountain West fan. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not, cl you're not second class. You're not lower than anybody else. You just are who you are. And there's nothing wrong with being that. And it's what drives me a little bit nuts with, with some of that kind of just talk. And it's all about money. It the, is. The, it's the all about P2, money. It's the, the business. The SEC and the all the money and, and power, unfortunately, is gravitating towards the P2, yeah. towards the SEC and the Big Ten, and everybody else is playing musical chairs trying to scramble for whatever they got. That's right. And sometimes you don't make the best decisions when you're doing, when you're acting like that. Yeah, well, we wanted to bring that up. We will stay on the Texas State rumors, maybe news that may be coming. Um, we, we don't know when that may hit, but we will certainly keep an eye on it. Of course, on X is where you can find any of our immediate information, but we try to do updates as quickly as we can as well. So with that, make sure you give this a like and subscribe if you like our content. We'll see you guys next time on The Big Mountain.